yeah. just to introduce the topic. I'm Jess and this year I'm riding the route of the Tour de France. sure exactly how long it is it's approaching 4,000 kilometers I don't exactly know how long it is because they make changes to the route and stuff and I mean I've been sent links with all the information but I'm I'm yeah. adopting a bit of a less is more approach in terms of how much I really know I know the magnitude of the task because then I can train for it but I think getting bogged down in the nitty gritty like it's this many kilometers, it's this much. Uh, I don't actually think that's that good for me to think about constantly. So I'm kind of dipping in and out of the information in the run up to it, so that I know enough that I don't know too much. Ignorance is bliss. My biggest fear is something stopping me doing it that I can't control. So an injury, a crash, because that's just annoying. I, I, I can prepare for it and do all the right things in the run up to it, but then if something kind of wipes me out that I can't control, that's a big fear, because I'm obviously gonna put a lot of time and effort into the run up to it, make quite a lot of sacrifices of my time and what I'm doing. And so if I got there and I don't know, my knee decided to blow up on day five, that's my biggest fear. All I can do is make sure I'm best prepared to prevent anything like that happening. And so in my mind, that's things like strength and conditioning. Um, so I've tried to build in a little bit of that into my week as well as cycling. I don't think it's that good for you to only cycle and only move your body in like one direction. So. We do yoga once a week and I try and do some kind of core and stretching and mobility two or three times a week, nothing big. Um, a few exercises once I've got off the turbo usually. Um, and also the way that Coach Ken's structured my training is it's, it's like gradually increasing the volume and I think that's just the smartest way to, to get as fit and strong as I need to be and hopefully not overload myself. I think last I think last week was 11 and a half hours. So in March we're going to Calpe and I spoke to Ken the other day and his idea is for me to almost do like a mini tour experience. So riding long days back to back, probably quite a few of them on my own just to get used to how I would pace myself over maybe six or seven hours with various sort of long climbs in it and then doing that day after day, making sure I'm eating enough um, and seeing how I cope with that and that will also throw up any maybe bike fit issues or anything like that that won't rear their head whilst I'm only doing maybe two hours on the turbo or something but maybe after five hours my left lower back starts hurting so just finding out those things before it's too late. Um, so the team of 10 of us, we are getting to know each other a lot at the moment via kind of a Facebook group. Um, everyone's from all over the place, there's some Americans, and someone from the Netherlands, and, and then all this sort of English people live in London. So I know a couple of them fairly well, I know of a few of them and then some of them are complete strangers. So yeah, just getting to know everyone. We'll hopefully meet at least once before the event. Um, the Americans in particular are coming over to Europe to do some riding, so we're gonna try and cross paths with everyone before the big event, but we'll have three weeks riding together, so we'll get to know each other. <laughs> not too good to know. When I visualize it, just like, when you're riding and it's sunny and you're on like an epic road, just that feeling, I really love that. I think that, to be honest, and like the camaraderie of what we're all going to go through together, I like being in that kind of bubble of 
of an event where you don't really know what's going on in real life and you're just existing in this situation that's quite weird and cool and where all you're doing is eating, riding a bike and yeah, sort of getting through each day. Nice. Vibes. Uh, what, what, what part of the feeding are you most looking forward to? Tell us about, tell us about food. Feeding. <laughs> like massive baguettes. Just, I just, um, You're a big fan of eating in France, right? I love, yeah, I love French food. Um, kind of, it's quite simple, but it's always really nice. I grew up going to France loads, and our favourite thing ever was just like a baguette with like ham and cheese in, but somehow it's the best thing ever, especially when you're really hungry. And then, like croissants and sweets, <laughs> just, just eating loads, chips, um, yeah, French food, we <laughs> yeah. me and Lou have been daydreaming about what random McDonald's stops, because that definitely happened last time, and I think midway through a day cycling, a McDonald's stop is legit, legit. And in French, in, in French, in France, it's like a restaurant going to McDonald's, so it doesn't feel so dirty. <laughs> Today I've got two hours with four eight minute, sort of, just basically as hard as it can go intervals. Like, imagine I was doing a 10 mile time trial as hard as I would go times four. I got hard. Yeah, but I've always, I've always got like upper limits at the moment, so like it's quite important I don't overcook anything because it's just not going to be useful to me. This whole, this whole thing is going to be like riding at a sustainable pace as efficiently as possible in a way that my body can recover from day after day. So yeah, when I'm training, there's often like an upper limit of where my heart rate is allowed to go. <laughs> so. I've done 32 of my training sessions now, I've got six sessions a week, five weeks, and I feel now like it's, I would describe myself as feeling fit now, which is nice because I haven't felt like that for a while. Um, I feel like I can kind of ride at a fairly decent power output without my heart rate going mad, which was which is a big improvement from a few weeks ago where I felt like I was all over the place. So. I definitely am going in the right direction. There's obviously a lot more to come. Um, I want to be able to ride like with more power. I want to be a bit more strong, but I think that will come in time. Yeah, I've done 32 sessions out of what I think will be approximately 140 sessions, which is six sessions a week for the next 18 weeks. And then there's like a two week taper before Tour, where I actually think I will do stuff and just it just will be not hard. Mm, if you've got any questions you want to ask me about uh, how I'm training, what I'm eating, what our plans are as a team, anything like that, um, yeah just hit me up in the comments below. <laughs> What's wrong? Uh, I'm having an e-puncture. <laughs> an e-puncture? What's an e-puncture, please? Um, it's when you train inside a lot and you have mechanicals but with your electronic gear. <laughs> What's your e-puncture look like? Uh, ah, the loading screen. I describe this as a slow e-puncture. <laughs> what, what have you been eating today? You're in good form, aren't you? you got some creativity in the brain. A slow e-puncture.